right, this is what are you saying, hashtag ways, where we talk about, uh, we're still talking about, uh, what's it called, the Nigerian power. And I, uh, I was saying just now that I want to leave this country. Well, and I'm not saying you're not going anywhere. We're going to stay here. And we still have Dr. Dr. Weaver Boa with us. Ha, Dr. Weaver. Now, so what do we do? Um, because we know that there is a lot of solutions out there, mm -hmm. you know. As I was saying during the break, that I have gone off a lot of, you know, I, first of all, I hate generator noise. And I mean, it, when I go to houses now and the generator is on, it's almost like I'm deaf because I can't hear anything. Um, recently, the National Assembly no, came up. <laughs> they no, came up with. Hear well. They came up with something saying that they wanted to ban that's a joke, generators. Well. I feel that that's a joke because you're, it's like putting There's the, no the, alternative. the right. cart before the horse and all of that. So, do you think we can actually truly? Because we have a lot of sun in this country. Mm -hmm. I mean, people are looking for sun; they can't find it. Mm -hmm. Can we start to get cheaper solutions? You know, right. if, if people, I mean, and power all the homes in, right. in Nigeria, is yeah. is that a possibility? Yeah. So first of all, I mean, around with solar, there's a lot of myths in Nigeria, and it's 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 I, I don't know who's spreading the myths. We won't we won't we won't like, guess that. But I mean, there's solar mini grids 200 kilometers from the Arctic from the Arctic Circle, right? Okay. They have no sun there hardly, and they're still generating solar. And then so, people wow. in Nigeria will say, ah. Rainy season, you know, go get enough sun, or it's harmatan, no go, you know. <laughs> but that's just nonsense. Mm. So we have, we are close to the equator. So 24, you know, 365 days, okay, 363 days a year, let's say, two days maybe we don't. We have plenty enough sun to generate, you know, full capacity for, for solar. So that's fine. If we would actually cover all of Ikordu local government with solar panels, we could power all of Nigeria. Wow. We could wow. do the, the 30,000 megawatts that the, the government says we need for the, the country. We just need to cover one local government, we'll have enough solar panels. So there's nothing solar can't power. Just You just need enough solar and you need to size it correctly to power what you want it to power. Wow. So why are we not exploring So what? It? Can I just okay. ask? Because yes. I know that this solar panel you're talking about, there's yes. some houses in Ikoyi that they have it. Now, what year do you project that the cost of solar power, including uh -huh. storage, right. will be affordable for the common man? Okay, it's already affordable. for the By common man, you don't mean you. <laughs> You mean well. <laughs> okay. So okay, it is it's already affordable. Um, but so okay, but it could become more affordable if customs would take their hands off a bit. So solar panels were supposed to be duty free when they mm. imported. About a year and a half ago, customs suddenly out of the blue reclassified them and they said, Oh no, 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 it's now five, ten percent. I mean it's always wow. different depending on the order. And they said it's because a solar panel can generate electricity, therefore it's a generator. So we'll and we were saying, so, okay, so if you bring a solar panel that has no diode, nothing, that you can use to make furniture, you can, that one can be imported for no VAT, no duty, whatever. Mm. But if you're going to generate electricity, which is our number one development problem, we're going to charge, I mean, it's just nonsense, right? And then in addition, the batteries are 20, 30, 40%, and it's different every company, every time they order, it's a different number, so you can't even build your your economics around, you don't know what it's going to be until so it like arrives. So it's like ourselves. Yeah. So it adds 30, let's say, and batteries are more expensive than the panels, obviously. It's yes, the biggest yeah. cost. Inverters, etc. And those are taxed really heavily when, when they come into the country. And even though there is some production of panels, um, there's a company called Oxano that makes panels. There's Green Age Technologies in Enugu that makes, um, that makes inverters. So some of that is happening, but not clearly at the capacity we need. So you can't just say we're putting the duties because we want to protect our, we don't have a local industry. So if you would take those off, suddenly the cost of a solar system could be 20, 30% less. And then it actually starts looking more competitive than a generator. Right. Especially because a generator has recurring costs, right? A, a, a solar, solar doesn't system, need all those maintainers yeah, and all At least that. for now, maybe later yeah. they'll tax the sun too, but for now they don't. <laughs> right, yeah. No, so, 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 but then also, I mean, so you have different sizes of solar systems, right? The, the smallest size is a solar home system. And this is maybe anything from 50 to 200 watts. So it's quite small, but it's for like a low-income household or a very small business. It can light, you know, four or more light bulbs, can charge your phones, run a fan, run a TV, you know, for a barber shop, run the clippers, you know, smaller so stuff basics, like that, the basics. Yeah. And the, the, the largest company in that space is a company called Lumos. They now yeah. have 100 and I think almost 110,000 paying metered customers who pay every month and, 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 you know, like the typical disco in Nigeria does only has maybe 200,000 paying customers a month. Wow. So Lumos, which is only three years old, has, is catching up to the discos in terms of metered paying customers. Wow. 
Wow. And so the, the way the Lumo system is, they know that the typical low-income Nigerian cannot buy the system outright. So the credit so so supply so you, you. Right, so you pay, a, you pay a deposit, and then every month you pay for the power, and then after a certain amount of time you own it. Yeah. And, and there's no, a number of companies that are doing, doing that. There's one called Ulu Solar, there's Pan-African Solar. There, there's a lot of them out there. Wow. Then there's another segment a bit above that, which is like a solar system, but for like a middle-class household or a small business, like a pharmacy, a small clinic. Um, and, and, and those ones then, it's more like three to five kilowatts. Okay. But similar, similarly, recognizing that companies, that even small companies or households, can't mm -hmm. afford the upfront cost. So they'll say, okay, fine, just pay us a deposit and then pay for the power mm -hmm. to make it affordable. Or now banks like Sterling Bank are giving consumers loans. So you can now say, okay, I want a loan and then I'm gonna buy this, I'm gonna get this system in my yeah. house and then I'll pay yeah, Sterling Bank. You know, so there's, Again, these are all Nigerian companies like Arnergy, Pirano, fantastic. so it's, it's like a growing. So, yeah, yeah, so because yeah. um, um, somebody is, was saying that mm. um, the population, say hashtag ways, mm. the population in Nigeria live, um, the larger population in Nigeria live under one dollar um, per day, mm -hmm. and I know um, doctor finances alternatives. I know a doctor. Ah, I don't get this question. Oh, maybe we should take something else. Um, how affordable is mm -hmm. his portfolio companies? Okay. Mm -hmm. um, solutions right. to meet power needs. Okay, he says a doctor finances alternative solutions. How affordable is his portfolio companies? I think I mean the companies yeah. we invest in. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So again, you know, like I said, I talked about the mini grids before. The the cost is high compared to the grid. Even the solar home systems, it's high. But when it's it's spread out over time and you're not paying for the upfront infrastructure, then it actually is is affordable. is affordable. And over time, as batteries get lower in cost right. and maybe as you know maybe if the tariffs at importation are lower or we so if i manufacture it here we, we, it can become very affordable if i hear you correctly mm -hmm. if the government was truly willing mm -hmm. you know to fight this power challenge mm -hmm. that we have mm -hmm. in nigeria mm -hmm. it would have been yeah. so easy to say you know what let me it's not even lowering the tariff take off the entire tariffs when it comes to companies that are willing to invest in alternate mm -hmm. solutions like mm -hmm. probably the solar right. um, solution so that they can actually bring them into this country. Right. Then you have this payment structure with mm -hmm. the people and would have solved this problem a long time ago. Right. So do you think there's a willpower for this to even happen? Mm -hmm. So, yes. So I know we blame government a lot, but actually on off-grid power, government has actually done quite well. Okay. In the last two to three years, there, there's an agency called the Rural Electrification Agency, the REA which is basically, you know, their mandate is to unlock rural electrification. But they've sort of expanded that to focus on, you know, providing power for off-grid communities anywhere that is. And in Nigeria, off-grid can even be in the city, right? Wow. Which is the only place in the world like that, I should say. <laughs> um, but, but the Rural Electrification Agency has, has driven um, a policy agenda and, and so many other things that have opened up the market. So they, they you know, pushed through the mini-grid re um, regulation, which, which allowed for those mini-grids I talked about and it gives certain protections from discos just taking them over so that investors could feel comfortable putting money in. Mm -hmm. um, they've, they've done the you know, eligible customer regulation has come through, which, which then allows customers to buy from other sources if they're not getting enough. And with eligible customer, for example, Gencos can actually sell directly to end users mm -hmm. above two megawatts, mm -hmm. and that's starting to happen. Um, then the REA has also pushed through a lot of funding. They brought in a lot of funding, half a billion dollars of funding. $500 million of funding from the World Bank, the African Development Bank, to push solar home systems, mini grids, and all that across Nigeria. They're also taking all 37 federal universities off the grid. Oh. Um, the ones in, you know, in, the, in the south are, are being put on gas. The ones in the north on solar. Um, so they so put, is like, this already happening? It's already happening. It's already happening. Yeah, so Unilag is, is now on gas. Okay. Um, Bayer University in Kano has an 8 megawatt um, solar, solar plant. Also. You know, so it's happening all over. And, and it's... The, the general public probably doesn't know enough about this. Mm -hmm. Exactly. But, but well, so we, we do need to give government credit for that. They've done really well. Absolutely. Yeah. So if you know, they the were supposed to, yeah, okay, you go no. ahead. No, I was going to say that, yes, there is, I, I just realized there is so mm -hmm. much going on and we don't see this all the time in the news. Mm -hmm. So why is it hidden? That, that's mm -hmm. one. And also, I, I'm of the opinion that, yes, government has a role to play. And I like mm -hmm. the fact that you pointed out that government is working. Mm -hmm. However, is there any room for the average Nigerian? Is there something that we should do to mm -hmm. aid this mm -hmm. process? Mm -hmm. Because right on the streets, you see a lot of Nigerians, you won't pay your bills. Mm -hmm. Then you go mm -hmm. cut the wires yeah. and just yeah. add 
plus yeah. and plus and you yes. just, just find electricity. Yeah. So there yeah. has to be something that we can do. We right. have to take responsibility. Right. right. Well, I think Nigerian, um, co Nigerian consumers, I mean, at the beginning, I think you talked about it's National or World Consumer Day. Yeah, Consumer um, Day. I think, I think Nigerian power consumers have been so taken advantage of for so long that they no longer trust the system. Yeah. But I think now it, it should be clear that, okay, look, you know, discos can be your friends. <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> they can be, and I think like some, you please? So, right, some no, of the dis like you some of the discos are are are, are innovating and, and trying to do the right thing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you, in the end, if you if you use power, pay for it. Mm. Um, and then also, you know, they should be aware that there's these other options out there. Okay, if you if you don't trust the power company, go get a, a solar home system for your house. Mm. Um, you know, and many people have already obviously mm. gone the route of buying their own generator. Um, so people have sort of taken it into their own hands, but we just need to know that, you know, when we don't pay, we also create the problem that we then suffer from. That's true. Right. Um, but but so you know, it, it's a it's a mix, right? So the discos have to give a little, the consumers have to give a little, uh, but then the consumers also now have more and more options, and thankfully also some of them are cleaner renewable options. So these cleaner renewable options, I know some families that have invested in solar panels, mm. everything, all the works, and mm. it was a complete flop. Yeah. You yeah. know, so because now that's the that's the way to go. Mm. Some people don't know the right companies mm. to invest. And right. I'm happy you mentioned right. a few because right. um, I mean I cannot imagine spending five hundred thousand or six hundred thousand right. to okay. set right. up right. a right. solar system and maybe after two weeks your it's battery is depleting yeah. Yeah. and all of yeah. that. So how yeah. do we even identify right. these yeah. right companies to yeah. work you with? You know, there isn't yet a lot of quality regulation. Yeah. So ESO and Standards Organization of Nigeria is starting to look at the solar space okay, to, yes. to kind of mandate quality and so on. But that isn't yet in place. So the industry is in, in many ways self-regulating. Yeah. Um, and so if you, you know, if anyone out there is looking to get a system, I mean, if you look at any company in our portfolio, obviously, so there's going to be a certain... You can set yes. them, verify that those yes. companies are we, bringing yes. in the right yes. things. That's but fine. But then also there's, a, there's um, some, you know, there's the Re Renewable Energy Association of Nigeria, RIAN. Oh. Okay. Um, any member of that organization, you know, would be would be thrown out if they're if they're selling low quality. Awesome. Um, so so those are, it's sort of a way That's of the fantastic. industry to self regulate. But we also there is a problem of fake stuff coming in, even with solar home systems and all that, and it really hurts the industry. Yeah, it be is. And then it also hurts the reputation because that's then when the diesel guys can say, aha. I was going to ask work. this question because we, um, I kind of work in the SME, mm. SME space mm. and I find a lot of these solar companies, mm. local ones coming and saying that they don't get the finance. So mm. I'm not talking about the big ones, but the mm. small ones that want to start. So mm -hmm. where do you think, because it's also very new and mm. then probably the lenders don't mm -hmm. understand right. how to lend to that space and, yeah. you know, how the business would bring back the right. money. Right. What is the, your best advice then? Right. How do you so, look at those? Yeah, sets? so companies that are um, in the solar space or the, renew or the alternative energy space in Nigeria, the problem is, is that a bank looks at them in the same bucket as the power sector as a whole, yes. right? And the majority of Nigerian commercial banks are saddled with really bad debts from the Gencos and the Discos when they were privatized. And so many of them, they've just been told, you can't give any more power loans. And no matter how much you try and explain to them, OK, this is a, an off-grid solar company. It is completely different. In many ways, it's more of, a, it's more of like a telco and a, and a fintech play than even a power play. But they just don't do it. So I mentioned earlier Sterling Bank. Sterling Bank didn't have any of those power assets. So they, they actually have become the leading bank in this space because awesome. they didn't have that legacy. Mm -hmm. um, there's other banks that are now coming in, Fidelity, FCMB. Um, we don't see a lot of the bigger banks doing it, but then again, most of these we're talking of you know maybe 10, 20 million naira's yeah. size loans, which those big banks don't really do anyway. Yeah. But so there is some of that coming in, but for the most part, you know, in any industry, especially a new one in any economy, you don't first go to the commercial banks anyway. You go to investors like like us and, and other you know um, venture like capital okay. angel investors. Okay. And go to that. So it, it, any, in, you know, it's hard to go to a bank and say, okay, I actually have not developed anything, haven't deployed anything, but give me a loan. It just doesn't happen. It doesn't happen. Um, and so I think sometimes the companies that shout the most about not having access to finance, they themselves haven't done the work they need to do to, mm. to do, you know, start at ideation, angel growth, and then okay, commercial. Yeah, but there is a lot of financing. I mentioned the half yeah, billion. Yeah, you did. But I'm just the, wondering, does yeah. that finance get to this level? It's there for them. It's there, it's there for, for them. them. But, we but just I, have to find it. Yeah, but, but we, you know, as investors, you know, we get obviously we have a long pipeline of investable opportunities. 
Um, but you find, again, like I said, you often find that the companies that talk the most out there about, oh, there's no financing, are the ones that when you say, can I have your CAC registration, can I have this or that, then they you're don't respond. You're not ready, mm -hmm. you're not ready. And yeah. so you're like, okay, before you make noise, come and yeah. do also, what you need to so do. So yeah. if I hear you correctly, mm -hmm. so it means that people, because I know some, some people that are farmers, they have big farm plantations, mm -hmm. they want to move their powering mm -hmm. structure to solar and get off mm -hmm. diesel and all mm -hmm. of that, so they can actually come to your company to say, okay, you know what, can you help me out, mm -hmm. or would you recommend them to yeah. companies so, on the? So we more invest in the in the operators themselves. Okay, so this, um, the but then but then our investment, say in, in a company that does that, means that then the farmer that company now has capital to now deploy, so mm -hmm. that the farmer can now just pay for the power. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you so yeah. much. Do we have more? I thought you had some questions. Okay, so I did. I, did. <laughs> Quickly. I, thought, I thought we were running out of time. One second. Just one more question. So this question is actually dicey because uh -oh. it was saying that what is the role of corruption in this our dilemma and our right. problem? I, I said that already. Diesel delivery. Yeah, diesel, okay. diesel, diesel delivery. So that's, yeah. that's yes. at, only at that level. Well, I mean, other levels, but I think that's the fundamental that's one fundamental because it's one. so cross cutting. Yeah. yeah. That's the, yeah. That's the only okay. question. Okay. <laughs> so, if you had one yeah. thing right now to say to the government, you know, that would be like, you know, an advisory position right. to say, right. this is what we need to do, right, to to kill this, I mean, this power problem that we're having and bury it completely in right. Nigeria. Right. What would that be? So, it has to be one or can it be three? Okay, can three is fine. Three. <laughs> Trinity. Okay. So, for on grid, deregulate. Okay. 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 Just very simply, deregulate. Let people set the tariff they want to set, and then if people pay want to pay, they can or they can find another solution. Okay. So that's the first thing, deregulate on-grid. For off-grid renewable solutions, duty-free for all products that are related to that for like a five-year window, right? Mm -hmm. And then in the meantime, while that is happening, also then incentivize local production through that five-year window, right? So those two things. And then third, we really need to unlock domestic gas. Because okay. in the end of the day, Solar is fantastic and all that, but but we have so much gas resources so in Nigeria, just, yeah, no and and we don't we don't use it for the domestic power that we should. So it's really those three things. Awesome, thank you so much. Thank you for three, not one. <laughs> yeah, I think I've yeah, three, three was three was important. Yeah. Thank yeah. you so much. I learned right. more than we didn't really yeah. talk on the yeah. gas part. Well, like we, we didn't really touch it because we have that. You remember because that, that gas is still dependent on the government, right? Right. Yeah. It's, it's also overregulated. Yeah. yeah, it's overregulated. Thank right. you so much, Doctor. All right, thank you. It's been we have you some boy. other time, just in case. Yes, can we have you some other time? Anytime. Thank oh. you so much. Thank All right. you. All right. So remember, you can join the conversation. Remember, um, keep it going on all our social media platforms as we continue to hear what you are saying. Um, I think we're done for today. Yes. Today has been very enlightening. Very, Thank very. You so much. Yeah. yeah, so catch a repeat broadcast of um, this show at 3 p.m. tomorrow. And um, let's hear what you're saying tomorrow. Tomorrow, people keep sending us messages during the repeat. I don't know why. They don't know that <laughs> it's, it's, okay. it's a That's repeat. So in case you missed today's quote, here it is again. Um, Electricity can transform people's lives, not just economically, but, but socially. socially. Yeah. 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 So. And you, do you have views on that? Well, it's exactly correct. It's a um, can it's it's transformative socioeconomically. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much, Doctor, for coming, and have Thank a lovely you. weekend, everyone. Bye, everyone.